Hello everyone, back to today's third video. Uh, so we've got something new to show you for today's uh, third video. A couple of days ago, e 7 after IMT released a huge amount of data into the public domain data that had previously just been for pro meteorologists uh, to be able to see. Now all members of the general public can have a look at this uh, stuff. And uh, also we're going to look at the e 7 extended forecast charts uh, for the next six weeks. We're going to look at mean cell pressure anomalies. Um, we're going to look at temperature and rainfall anomalies too. Uh, this extended range data updates twice a week on a uh, on a Tuesday and also on a uh, Friday uh, as well. So on a Friday, I think we'll probably look at the full range, the full six week range uh, in a video, in an update. And then on Tuesday, I think we'll probably stick to like the uh, month head idea for uh, like weeks one, two, three, four, and include weeks five and six from Tuesday's update in the live stream on a Wednesday. It's just Working out the best way of presenting all of the uh, data to you, but uh, yeah, this is this really uh, really good stuff because it, it all of this was only available to ProMets, uh, you know, and uh, it's never been available to general public to see this. So uh, so so uh, it's really great what the ECMDF has has done with this. So I shall get on that for you very shortly. Uh, it's going to take us into the middle of November. Uh, just to say that if you're enjoying the videos and the content on the channel at the moment, please can you uh, give us uh, a like on the videos. Um, there's no in the comments what you think. Make sure you subscribe to the Gaz Weathers YouTube channel, and it'd be absolutely great if everybody can do that. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. We're going to be live streaming, by the way, after 10 o'clock tonight. We're going to have a curfew live stream after 10. Uh, so that'll be a bit of fun. JMA Friday and uh, 10 to 14 David they have been released so far today. Right, so let's go through these mean cell pressure anomaly uh, maps then. So uh, I've got a few uh, ways of showing this to you. I want to want to your feedback in the comments. Let me know uh, which version you would prefer to see within uh, the video. So this is like the North Atlantic and European view. So this is week one mean sea level pressure anomaly uh, showing high pressure. Uh, this is a weekend in the 90s. It's going to be like the 12th to the 19th of October. I have checked with the ECMWF, uh, with ECMWF, um, and they've confirmed that where, where it says valley time, that is up to. So, so this is from the week like the 12th to the 19th of October, or the week ending Monday the 19th of October. So it's next week, basically. Uh, week one, showing high pressure blocking in the North Atlantic around uh, Iceland and into the uh, normal latitudes as well as extending back into the Arctic. Low pressure uh, through much of uh, Europe is going to be bringing in the wind from like an easterly type direction. So you would expect it to be quite cold in the north and the west of Europe. Reasonably dry, particularly to the northwest. Could be some showers in more eastern parts of the country. This is week two, the week ending the 26th of October. So this one looks more unsettled. We've still got the blocking up to the north, up towards Greenland, but it is receding back up to the north, lower pressure coming in from off the Atlantic and feeding up perhaps a milder southwesterly wind, but also wetter into uh, the UK. By the way, the, this Friday bit will primarily be focusing on the UK and Ireland, whereas on Tuesday we will continue to focus on, on the wider European scene. But of course, everybody in Europe can see the, the broad setup that's going on uh, across Europe with, with this. But uh, but on a Friday, I think we focus primarily on the UK and on Ireland as well. That's week two then, looking perhaps a little bit milder and more unsettled with the mean sea pressure anomaly. This is week three uh, for the week ending the, uh, ending the 2nd of November. Uh, and with this one, we take the above average heights out into the middle of the Atlantic. There's no particular evident area of below average heights of low pressure, but you think there's probably going to be a trough through here somewhere, given we've got a ridge out here. There's got to be some low pressure somewhere, hasn't there? So you think we're probably going to be pulling down some quite cold northerly winds there in uh, the last week of October and into the opening days of November. Uh, week four is the week ending the 9th of November. Now, of course, the further out we go, remember, with this, the week of a signal is going to get still a very weak signal for some higher pressure, though, to the south of Greenland. Otherwise, again, there's not much uh, to go on. So uh, the mean cell pressure on is by week four quite uh, weak. Week five is the week ending 
Uh, that's going to be the week ending the 16th of November. Yeah, just check that's right. So that's the week ending 16th of November. Still the idea of some higher pressure away to the northwest. So the ECMW is going to town, really, with higher pressure uh, to the north and to the northwest. It'll be really hot. So again, across many parts of Europe, there's not much uh, to go on. But with higher pressure up there, you will think that very least a jet stream is probably going to be diverted a little bit to the south. So we may be diverting the jet stream a little bit to the south. It certainly doesn't look like an overly mild sort of month to six weeks coming up. Far from it, with this high pressure continuously out to the north and the northwest, you expect it to remain at the very least quite chilly. And then this is week six, this is the week ending the 23rd of November. Now, this is a very, very long way out, of course. But if anything, it's perhaps suggesting like a strengthening, uh, maybe a little bit of a strengthening of blocking around Greenland. Um, this is a genuine trough of low pressure through uh, the UK and northern Europe. That looks cold and unsettled, probably bringing in northerly winds. And by this point, of course, it's a weekend, 23rd of November, so into the second half of November now. By this point, you will probably be expecting some snow to be turning up with this, even into the UK, certainly across Scandinavia. Uh, but you'll probably be expecting some snow if that came off even into the UK in the second half of uh, November. Now, bear in mind, this is a very, very long way away. This is six weeks, maybe. It's a very good model. And, of course, the 42-day the ensembles are at least partly what the UK Met Office bases their, um, you know, extended forecasts on that get updated uh, daily. So so it's a really good model. It is taken very seriously by the Pro Mets. We've always been able to see this over the years. Uh, but the further out you go, it does come with a little bit of a health warning. Now, I want to show you uh, another way of looking at this. So that is like the European view. Uh, so let's have a look at, so let's look at the Arctic view, Ben. So do you, So that's how the European view looks. I want to know uh, from the North Pole, though, it looks like this. I want you to tell me which version you prefer. So that's how week six looks from the North Pole view down. So again, we've got the, the higher pressure of the blocking strength into the south of Greenland and going back further into Greenland towards the Arctic lower pressure is through here. So you can see why that's probably quite a cold week. You would expect to be bringing in uh, northerly winds. So that's like the North Pole view down uh, type view. Uh, I also show you a global view. So this is how week six, week ending 23rd of November looks globally. Look at that. That's global. Uh, and again, we see that we've got the high pressure up towards Greenland and extending back into normal latitude. Notice generally quite high pressure across much of the polar field, actually, both pink colours there. The blue extending, uh, blue colours extending through the west of Europe. So again, it shows why we would be quite cold through there. Winds certainly coming in from the north, maybe a northeasterly direction. Let me know in the comments which view you prefer. Do you prefer the European view? Do you prefer the, uh, the North Pole view down? Or do you prefer the uh, do you prefer the global view, the wide global view? I don't think there's like a northern hemisphere uh, view. So there's a North Atlantic view. Uh, so that's how it looks with the North Atlantic uh, as well. So there are many, many different ways of being able uh, to see all of this data. Uh, and please let me know which view uh, you would like to see. Uh, this is a temperature anomaly for week one. Week one temperature anomaly for the week ending the uh, 19th of October for uh, Europe. So east-west split. We've been seeing this within the model data a lot just recently. Warm over on the east side of Europe for I in the UK. Much of Western Europe is looking cooler than average. This is the week two temperature anomaly, generally going a little bit milder in week two. This is when we're uh, taking the high pressure a little bit further north, so maybe pulling up something a bit milder from the south. So those warm and average temperature anomalies sort of extending back into the west of Europe. It's only a little bit above average for Ireland and for the UK, but it is a slightly milder week there for the weekend of the 26th of November. Week three temperature anomaly goes colder again, though goes a little bit cooler through the last week of uh, November into uh, last week of October into the opening days of November. The West of Europe is becoming cooler. Eastern Europe still looking generally quite warm. 
Uh, week four, temperature anomaly. Uh, of course, the further out we go, the weaker signals are getting, but still the broad idea is there that for much of northern and eastern Europe, it's warmer than average. Western Europe looking a little bit cooler than average. Ireland and the UK generally slightly below average temperatures. Uh, week five, temperature anomaly for week ending the 16th of November. Very weak signals. Uh, by this point, but still you can see that broadly the idea is there the far northeast and east of Europe looks warmer The west of Europe possibly looking a little bit cooler the further out we're going the weaker the signals are getting and week six uh, Looks like that so uh, still it goes on really eastern far eastern parts of Europe uh, milder than average. Western Europe hinting at being cooler than average. If anything, it might be turning a bit colder up towards Iceland and Greenland, possibly plunging southwards into Western Europe. Uh, and then we've got the precipitation anomaly. Uh, so they're looking uh, like this. Week one, precipitation anomaly. You can see where the blocking is, can't you? You can see where it's driving average just here, where we've got these orange colours. So dry and average to the north and to the west of the uh, British Isles. Wetter than average over on the eastern side of Europe. So where it's mild, it's also uh, quite wet. But where it's coldest, it's relatively dry away to the northwest. Uh, anyway, notice it is even picking up on light because it's going to be an easterly type week next week. And the ECM model is picking up on the showers and maybe longer spells of rain. But we will draw in to the eastern side of the country through the North Sea on those east winds. This is a very, very good model. A lot of the models won't pick up on that sort of uh, data. So this is why the ECM is rated so very highly, I think, because uh, a lot of this will be showery stuff, showery rain. And as I say, a lot of models won't pick up on that very minute detail uh, so so actually eastern areas next week could be quite wet but in the northwest would be relatively dry obviously if this was like a couple of months on then all of this coming in from the east will probably be snow uh, this is how uh, week two precipitation anomalies look. This is a wetter week generally across much of northwestern Europe. So it's wetter than average across northwest Europe. The blocking is still there, driving average up towards Iceland, but the, the, the dry conditions are receding back northwards again to some degree. Um, southern Europe looking generally dry. But yeah, that's definitely a wetter week for Ireland and the UK in uh, week two. Week three uh, looks like that. Weekend in the 2nd of November. Signals getting weaker the further out we're going, uh, of course, looking pretty dry out to our west and northwest, though. So still plenty of high pressure in the North Atlantic, you would assume. Uh, a bit wetter over Scandinavia. Otherwise, very weak signals. Southeastern parts of Europe looking quite dry uh, through there. Uh, let's go even further out then, uh, shall we? Let's go to week four, precipitation uh, anomaly. So, uh, okay, let's go to week five, precipitation anomaly. This is week ending the 16th of November. Uh, very weak signals, but possibly looking a little bit drier across northern parts of Europe. Otherwise, there's a lot of white going on there, lots of no signal going on. And then week six, precipitation anomaly looks like that for weekend of 23rd of November. This could be a very wintry week for Northern Europe, actually, if it comes off. It's six weeks away. So the week ending, the 23rd of November, put it in your diary that week, week ending 23rd of November, and in six weeks' time, we'll see whether Northern Europe does have a very wintry week. But it's going for above average precipitation across much of Northern Europe, going for drier an average uh, around Greenland, southern Greenland and Iceland, and that's where the blocking is, and extending down the mid-Atlantic reach through here. Uh, lower pressure is through here, uh, and of course we will pull down northerly winds. So this precipitation, by the second half of November, a lot of this precipitation around here would be wintry, would be snow, uh, with, with the high pressure over Greenland forcing down the wind from the north. So just stick that in your diary or somewhere. Uh, week ending the 23rd of November. It'll be interesting to see if that week ending 23rd of November is wintry across northern parts of, uh, of Europe with northerly winds and, and an Arctic plunge. Uh, right, so that's it. Let me know in the comments what you think. New data. We always love some new data, especially if it's long-range stuff. 
So, so let me know in the comments what you think. Which version of the mean sea level pressure anomalies do you prefer? European, um, North Atlantic, uh, Arctic view down, or the global view? Again, please let me know in the comments uh, which view of that you prefer. And also, uh, and also just generally, generally let me know what you think. I think it's really, really great stuff what the ECM has done this week. We've been waiting years and years and years for all of this stuff to, to come online properly uh, in this sort of format. So here it is. And now we can really start going to town a bit. So I'm absolutely loving this and being able to bring this data to you. If you enjoy the videos at the moment, free videos today, and a lot of them focusing on longer range stuff. If you enjoy the videos, please give us a like on the videos. Let us know in the comments what you think. Make sure to subscribe to Gal's YouTube channel. We're trying to get to 8K subs, so uh, please subscribe to the channel if you aren't yet subbed. And uh, don't forget to tell, tell your friends uh, about Gal's Webbies, and we're going to get to 8K as soon as we possibly can. We're going to be back after 10 o'clock with your curfew live stream. So come back uh, for that then. If you are around and if you've got time to, uh, we'll have a bit of a laugh after 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we've got the uh, weekend forecast coming up. We've got a 10 to 14 day coming up tomorrow uh, as well. Sunday, of course, it's the winter update. Sick winter 2000 and 2021 update coming up on Sunday. There'll be a little Christmas written update on Sunday as well at the website. And uh, when we're live streaming uh, from 6 o'clock on Sunday evening, we will be able to bring you Patel Peng's analogues for the winter of 2020-21 in that live stream. They have updated. So uh, more on Patel Peng's winter analogues for you in the live stream at 6 o'clock. But loads to come between now and then, including the sick winter 2020 update part 1, which will be released at 10am on Sunday morning. Gonna see you after 10 for the live stream. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.